has been expressed or implied by such forward looking statements. Please note that we have mailed the complete investor deck including the results, the press release and investor presentation and the same is also available on the company's website. In case uh, anyone of you has not received it or not on the mailing list, please write to us and we'll be happy to send the same over to you. To take us through the results and answer your questions today, we have the top management of Lakshmi Organic Industries Limited, represented by Mr. Ravi Goenka, Chairman and Managing Director, and Mr. Satish Nabar, Executive Director and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Harshwardhan Goenka, Executive Director of Business Development and Strategy, and Mr. Parker Roy Chaudhary, the Chief Financial Officer. We will start the call with a brief overview of the quarter gone past and uh, then conduct the Q&A session. Um, with that said, I will now hand the call over to Mr. Ravi Goenka. Over to you, Mr. Goenka. Uh, thanks, Ivakar. A uh, very good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our earnings call for quarter two of this financial year. As you all may have already seen the results, this quarter has been one of the most challenging periods in the recent history of the company. As such, the chemical industry has been under cost pressures in the light of higher raw material, energy, and logistics cost, and Lakshmi is not an exception. As guided from time to time, the catastrophic flood, which we mentioned in our last investor call as well, resulted in inventory and volume losses, eroding our profitability for this quarter. The plants restarted on the 5th of September. However, all the plants could come back to normalcy only towards the end of September, causing a near 60-day disruption of capacity utilization in our specialty intermediate plant. Now, all the plants are back on stream and I'm extremely proud and appreciative of the efforts put in by our teams in this regard. Let me tell you, it is no mean task to commission a complex plant which has been submerged in water over a substantial time in a safe manner and achieve 100% capacity within a few weeks. My kudos to the operations team of our company. The acetyl unit had just a minor setback with respect to the floods and helped the company to remain profitable in this quarter, though the spreads normalized from an all-time high of the previous quarter. Our results for our first half remains robust, and we have nearly surpassed last year's profitability, the whole of last year's profitability. This has been due to our growing specialty business and a strong H1 for acetyls. The outlook for the second half and the year remains very positive. The overall demand for both the acetyl and the speciality intermediate remains steady across the sectors that we operate in. The SI order book is strong and we hope to capitalize on the opportunities presented to us in Q3 and Q4 of the current fiscal. Except the time lost due to the flood, our capexes that are going on in the SI division are on track and will be completed during March and April of 22. The fluorochemicals project is facing some increased costs due to time escalations, COVID restrictions in Italy, increased prices of building raw materials and infrastructure costs, logistics, supply chain disruptions, etc. While we have started to receive our first containers of equipment from Italy, the global shipping crisis is delaying our entire arrival schedules. We, however, expect the project to get operational in quarter one of FY22. And on the positive side, the customer engagement, product development, and sampling are underway, and the demand visibility is looking very strong. Finally, before moving on to the numbers, I would like to mention that our entire plant, equipment, inventories, and other properties are well insured. And the claim finalization, including claim for profit of loss, uh, pro loss of profit, is underway. Some of the performance highlights 
of the first half and the second quarter of fiscal 22 are as follows. Our H1 profit before tax is at 150 crores. In the current fiscal, it is almost equal to our entire annual profits of the previous full year. H1 to H1, the SI volumes are nearly similar, but due to the floods on quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, our SI volumes are down by 60%. Despite the disruptions in the current quarter, the CAPEX funding remained on stream for all the ongoing projects. The aggregate funding done is of the order of 100 crores, and all this has been done through internal accrual so far. During the half year and the quarter, our European subsidiary returned robust performance. It is likely to remain strong in the third quarter as well, as there are supply disruptions in Europe. And in EOS, the major European producer has declared force major. I'm confident of the long-term strategy and growth aspirations that we are pursuing. And I take this opportunity to thank our shareholders, employees, and all other stakeholders for their support and confidence reposed on us. On this call, I'm accompanied by Satej, our CEO, Partha, our CFO, and Harsh, Executive Director. And I would now leave the floor open to Divakar to take it forward. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Goenka. Uh, Lisa, you can vote for the Q&A. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question key assembles. The first question is from the line of Ankur Periwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Ankur, your line is in the talk mode. Please go ahead. Uh, Mr. Ankur Periwal, your line is in the talk mode. Please go ahead. As there's no response from the current participant, we'll move on to the next. That is from the line of Keshav from Raksan Investors. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, hi. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thanks a lot for taking my question. Uh, sir, my questions are a little bit uh, little on the long term uh, horizon. So, in a uh, research report on the global diet market, uh, there was a mention of availability of substitute derivatives having various advantages uh, like better water solubility, uh, etc. All this uh, leading to alternatives becoming highly preferred choice by industrial manufacturers. So keeping this in mind, where do you see the future of uh, this industry headed? Are these big enough uh, threats? Sure. So hi, I can take that. I'm Harsh. Uh, so let me first put it this way. Uh, chemical industry in general constantly tries to substitute each other in the most efficient way via route of synthesis. So if you look at any chemical formula, it can be made synthetically via various routes. Uh, a diketine is no exception. Now, diketine over a long period of time and over a lot of technology perfection has actually become a fairly cost-effective, robust molecule, and which leads to derivatives of more than, I think, 50-odd products now. In a large commercial way, there will be many other small products as well. But... Given that nature, such threats will always arise, but we don't see any major disruption being caused to this industry in general. Okay, sure, sir. Thanks a lot. Uh, sir, uh, Mitani's assets uh, that we've acquired to step into fluorine chemistry, sir, I was reading a bit uh, on the company itself. So it got, bank uh, got into bankruptcy due to environmental viol violation of contaminating groundwater. And there has been considerable voice against PSAs and PFOs uh, in the developed world. 
the short term seems okay for pfis in india as they are unregulated so so what do you see as the future like would we be doing anything differently to avoid entering into similar situation in the long term yes so i i can again take that uh, two parts to this answer the first uh, metany has a legacy issue which dates back more than 40 years which is why they went into trouble the current the last owners of metany and over i think the last 30 years they were doing everything legally according to european standards even in our context uh we at lakshmi always follow international precedents uh not only that is required by our customers but we believe in best practices so we will be following similar regulations here in india and maintaining and en- enhancing existing safety standards by metan uh what you are referring to pfoa pfos those are all long chain products which are no way part of our product plan or product list uh those were made 40 years ago and are historically products in nature and not relevant anymore globally so sir so uh, sir if i can follow up with a uh, uh, one point uh, uh, uh i got hold of mitney financials from 2011 to 16 and they have been uh, loss making every year now i don't have the background of the business environment or the simultaneous impact of any litigations that were ongoing during that time But is it uh, India's structural cost advantage that would give Lakshmi a stage to do significantly better with these assets? Which would I take, Pathash? Or you sure. want to go ahead? No, no, go ahead, Pathash. No problem. Yeah. So uh, it's wonderful, Kesar, that you have actually had a look at the Mitani historical numbers. But what you should look up, I mean, you can work out, uh, are the contribution margin numbers, right? and if you if you look at uh, the numbers in greater detail they they are lo- fixed cost load especially the em- employment cost and the environmental management cost were exceedingly high if i remember rightly they would be of the order of 10 to maybe 11 million euros on a turnover of about 30 million so that was their uh, issue secondly uh, the the starting raw materials are chlorine and fluorine now india has a lot of chlorine so therefore uh, the supply chain is going to be uh, far more commercially viable than uh, having this plant located in western europe and there is a lot of hydrofluoric acid which is available in india locally and people are putting up additional hydrofluoric acid capacities as well so the, the overall cost economics of locating these facilities in here in india is certainly going to be far superior to having it in italy yeah so 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 thank you also i'll join back thank you a reminder to the participants anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one The next question is from the line of Bharat Shah from ASK Investment Managers Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi everybody. Uh, uh, of course, a quarter or two uh, really makes insignificant difference in the destiny of a firm, or even a year or two is not uh, the most critical period, but. when i see the results of the first quarter and when i see the results of the second quarter the contrast is really remarkable it it kind of reminds me of that charles dickens uh, quote uh, that these are the best of the times and these are the worst of the times i mean even in terms of the north uh, pole and south pole kind of polarity uh the difference between the two quarters sounded really uh, quite incredible so uh, just wanted to understand uh the long term character of the business with uh, such uh, wild spasms or changes is an expected uh, nature or character of the business or uh, this is kind of a glorious rare exception 
ുംഗ്ലാസ്റ്റ് <laughs> that is why you are seeing this north pole south pole kind of swing but i can give you <laughs> sorry a, a a reference quarter which is the second quarter of the last year which is fy21 that is a good model to follow in terms of the distribution of the top line between the ai and the si and the margin profile distribution of the margin profiles between ai and si eventually my sense is on a longer term basis that is what is going to pan out however we also need to superimpose on that a fact that in the acetyl business we grow by acquiring more volumes either organically or inorganically otherwise we will lose market share because we have a sense that the end markets are really growing at a, uh, a very good pace whereas in the daiki team piece it is a, a a matter of product delivery synthesizing new products and delivering them so therefore these two businesses will have to be probably evaluated through two different lenses and then maybe we can add up the numbers and see where we are arriving and um, so where does that lie i mean uh, uh, how how do we visualize the long term future of each of the pieces and of the firm in entirety par hi hi bharat bhai how are you ravi yeah ravi sir kaise hai thank you bas theek hai bharat bhai kaise hai aap ek dam mazay mein uh bharat bhai there are couple of things uh, as we have even uh, you know uh, presented to you before our long term investments in the long term lakshmi will be making more and more specialized products which are at the end of the value chain and acetyls will be a smaller part of the entire lakshmi organic so our whether it is our ebitda levels whether it is our uh, Uh, the fluctuations happen in the acetyl business and this quarter the like partha said both the things hit us the production loss because of the floods on the high margin si business and a down cycle of the acetyl business in this quarter and that's why you are seeing a larger piece but going forward like you said a quarter or even a year or two don't make a difference as you are aware lakshmi is investing all its money in putting in new plants with high margin dedicated plants for customers getting into fluorochemicals which are again high margin products and uh, completely new products that may not even be made today in india so that will level out uh, with a higher ebitda margin is my belief and the for a good way to look at uh, the business would be that ai business will primarily be the volume leader in terms of the growth rate while margins probably will be relatively in a range a side business uh, would offer both margin improvement uh, due to speciality and is in as the volume growth and therefore both uh, the business and the margin uh, would be on a longer term basis on ascendance I couldn't have put it better, Bharat Bhai. Okay. Uh, thank you, Goyal Sir. I'll I'll wait in the queue. Thank you, Bharat Bhai. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is from the line of Ankur Periwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Ankur, your line is in the talk mode. Please go ahead. Ankur uh your line is in the talk mode please go ahead 
As there's no response from the current participant, we'll move on to the next. That is in the line of Rohit Nagraj from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so the first, uh, rather not question, but observation, uh, our plant, as you said, that uh, was in function for about one month, and then the entire disruption was uh, 60 days. Um, uh, wouldn't uh, it, it have been uh, you know, prudent to uh, actually uh, intimate this to the investors that probably uh, this particular event has caused a serious disruption? So uh, just probably a suggestion, if uh, incrementally such uh, things happen, uh, it would be uh, really helpful for the investors to understand the gravity of the situation. The way globally, uh, it, you know, majors uh, companies intimate about the force majors, which may cause some disruption. I think this also would be a, a good practice, which can be followed incrementally. Yeah. Uh, the first, yes. Thank you for the suggestion. Uh, we yeah. were taking it on record. But for just for your information, we have uh, followed the formal process. We have intimated the stock exchanges about the event. We have also uh, intimated the exchanges, uh, and it's in the public domain, about the restart of the plant. The plant actually restarted after 45 days, but then it required another two weeks to sort of ramp up to its optimal capacity levels. But your point is... Uh, very well taken and we have we have issued force major notices to our contractual customers that's just for your information sure sir thanks thanks for this is really helpful uh so the first question is uh, on the margins so uh, as you talked in the earlier question that q2 fy21 would be a good representation in terms of the margins for the company uh, which are closer to about say uh, 11 odd percent so for the legacy business uh, is it safe to assume that uh, the margins will be about 11 percent and then based on the newer product addition and newer chemistry addition the margins uh, will have a, a different trajectory which uh, certainly would be upwards. Uh, is that right observation? No, I have not meant that. When I refer to the performance of that quarter, I have referred to the distribution between the two segments. Okay. Okay. So, so, okay. Yeah. So I have not I have not mentioned about the absolute margin percentage or the absolute margin. Right. Uh, apologies, I, I I understood it the wrong way. Uh, so the second question is on the fluoro uh, chemicals. Uh, you you mentioned that probably there will be a delay of about a quarter, but at the same time we've already started the sampling process. So how much time will it take for us to start the uh, commercial production and probably utilize the capacity uh, meaningfully? Thank you. Harsh, I think you can take this, please. Yeah, sure. So uh, the first thing on the sampling was started from our Kilo Lab facility that we had established during the COVID cycle, anticipating uh, extended lockdowns. Uh, that's the first response. The second uh, ramp up of a plant, we'd say, say 50, 60%, percent in the first year of first 12 months of fully running would be our ideal. Obviously, simpler the products, uh, depending on the customer's value chain, have they all have different qualification times. Different customers have got different qualification time and they won't try to which is what we're going about now. And having that Kilo Lab facility definitely helps us bridge this time and not have to wait for extended ramp up periods. All right, uh, got it. Uh, thanks a lot, and uh, Diwali wishes to the entire team. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is on the line of Jagweer Singh from Shade Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, my question is, what is the uh, rising in the style business right now? That 
is an information which you have to get from the market just this. How could we, I mean, do that? Different companies in this space have different pricing strategies. Yeah? But these are available to public domain. Okay. And sir, in a, uh, in a uh, presentation you have mentioned, you will uh, surpass the internal target for this year. So what are these internal targets? See, that word internal target is carefully crafted. We cannot uh, give out these numbers, no. Okay. These are all very, very price sensitive numbers. Okay. And sir, uh, look, so what is the, uh, uh, the margins we have achieved in the Q1 in the retail business? So going forward, are these margins sustainable, sustainable or not? No, 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 no. We have made this very clear in our investment investor communications earlier. We have stated this, I think, in our EGM also. We have stated this once again. Yeah. Hello, I finished the response. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Keisha from Braxan's Investors. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, so I'm touching upon the previous participant's question. Uh, one of our peers in uh, uh, the ethyl acetic uh, space had mentioned last year about a structural shift in the entire story. Like it being a green solvent, it is poised to have better baseline margin going forward. Now, I have heard conflicting views in the sense that some say some are saying that the margin would mean over to the eight nine percent levels. So I want to, I wanted to have your uh, view on that. So these green solvents, as far as we know, they are not really going to really replace, uh, I mean, they are not going to be dropping substitutes for ethyl acetate. That's, that's point number one. Okay? And <clears throat> in terms of the margins, I would uh, suggest that you have a look at the long-term margin profile. Information are available in the public domain. And those are the sustainable levels, but I would like to superimpose uh, my comments with the fact that we are experiencing a demand side expansion in the downstream industry. Therefore, supply demand correlation will also influence the pricing and the margin spreads uh, over shorter periods of time. Yeah. Sure, sure, sir. And that's all for me, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Sudhir Reddy, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I want to understand, uh, uh, as per the presentation, it was mentioned there were two new uh, dietitian products, I think, like piloted molecules uh, for the SI, in the SI space ready for commercialization, right? So is, is this like going to start uh, probably within this particular year or, or is, it, I mean, is it still under a piloted mode? So uh, both of those molecules, uh, we had planned to start in Q2, but they have shifted to Q3 and we expect it to happen in Q3. Uh, sir, are these molecules uh, uh, catered to which uh, sector of the industry, is it pharma or agro? Uh, one of them is pharma, one of them is agro. Sir, my next question is on the fluorine uh, side. Uh, with whatever happening on the uh, the China disruption and all, so where where the Indian fluorine industry might get benefited and also expected, right? Uh, the most of the agrochemicals where they require fluorine molecules. 
So are we our fluorine chemistry uh, or I mean uh, uh, like our our fluorine chemistry product set have anything caters to the agro industry or is it totally a different value chain where no one no one in India is already providing them? So two comments there. Um, Agrochemicals and pharmaceuticals. So both of these require fluorine molecules extensively. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at global and Indian landscape. So yes, both of these industries is what we would be catering to. Uh, agro will come first, and uh, followed by pharma, given the qualification times in pharma can be slightly longer. Thank you, sir. That's all I have. And happy Diwali. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star and one. The next question is in the line of Ashok Agarwal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. So my question to you is regarding the recent uh, catastrophic floods. So I also understand that uh, similar floods, very less intense, were noticed, were, were there previous years also. Uh, sorry to so, interrupt, Mr. Agarwal. So we are not able to hear you clearly. One second. My question is about uh, the recent uh, catastrophic floods, uh, which have resulted in a big uh, uh, stoppage of our products production. So I'm asking you, how are we preparing ourselves for say, future such catastrophic floods, knowing very well that previous years also such floods have occurred? So I want to know how we are preparing ourselves for future such events. Sure. Uh, Harsh, are you going in or you want me to go in? You can start part two, I'll pitch in. Okay. So, <clears throat> the, the, Mr. Agarwal, the dimension of the flooding which happened in the earlier years and which happened this year were very, very different. Just to give you a sense, in the earlier years, we had water which came up to about uh, three or four feet and then it receded very quickly. This time, the water level reached about 14 feet. Almost everything in the unit was underwater. And the water stayed back because there was a current and because of its uh, geographical location. So, you know, we had an assessment of the last flood which happened in uh, 2019. And that was the first flooding in that uh, unit. Uh, and we have been there in the region for more than 30 years. So we raised all the equipment which could be raised, especially the electrical equipment, to a height of eight feet. Dike walls were built and structures were built and the electrical equipment, especially the pumps and uh, compressors, etc., were put on those raised levels. But this time, uh, the, the flooding was far, far higher. The level was far, far higher. Therefore, the occurrence, the second time. Now, in... So therefore, we are looking at a larger answer to this question, which is a very rightful question, and it is there in our minds. So I would now like Harsh to uh, take it over from here. Yeah, so Mr. Agarwal, uh, obviously this is what bothers us a lot. Uh, and we've come up and split it into time-bound things that we can do, which will make us more sustainable as an organization. So the first is to do with uh, stock points and inventory. Uh, we're looking to put this in different locations and not keep it at our site. So that automatically reduces our inventory loss. Uh, that is the first short-term thing. Second, from some of the infrastructure that's present at our site, we're looking to raise that to a particular height so that even if a flood comes, the restoration time may be very low and it can happen in a quicker, safer manner. And three is an alternate site for production. But as you can imagine, any new site requires a lot more detailed thought, uh, thought process. So all three are being evaluated and being done in a time-bound manner. Okay, got it. Yeah, thank you so much.
Thank you. Hello. Yeah. The next question is in the line of Bharat Shah from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Given the fact that research is a critical component of our business, uh, we'll be keen to know how is the research and development uh, function uh, kind of carved out in the organization, staffing, trust, and uh, nature of investment being committed there. So, so Bharat Bhai, uh, glad to say that in the last quarter, we could increase our R&D staff strength by nearly 40%, uh, clearly indicating our intent to invest more primarily because they're seeing opportunities, a lot more opportunities than uh, we can digest. So we need to widen the scope in the beginning as well. Uh, second, we've got two new R&D facilities coming up sometime in the first quarter of next year. Uh, one in Mumbai, uh, a larger, much larger facility, and the second one in Italy, which we're also expecting to start up. So looking forward to both of these and uh, the ideation of a lot of the products is already complete. It's a matter of now uh, getting them into the lab. And uh, what would be the uh, total staffing strength in R&D and how it is a function organized? So uh, we have today almost 70 people in R&D. Uh, if you look at that, it's fairly large for our company size, and it's organized under a R&D head, split up between a site-based R&D and an innovation center in Mumbai. The future will obviously include the additional locations, which will also have site-based R&D and international R&D. And how many, what will be the kind of uh, uh, experience and academic profile of the people, uh, oh, okay. the and the, uh, so, the others? Sure, sure. So roughly about uh, 10 to 15 percent of all our people in R&D remain PhDs. And uh, there will be various levels of chemistry depending on what uh, level they are operating at. In addition to that, you've got the process engineering lab, uh, process engineering team, which also tends to be a mix of uh, PhDs and process engineers from reputed universities uh, like UD City in India. And would we say core chemistry research is a bigger strength or uh, chemical engineering is a greater strength for us? Uh, Bharat Bhai, you can't divide it in my opinion. Okay. Uh, if, if I have the chemistry, don't have the engineering product, kabhi sure. so vice versa. So I, I don't, you have to have both. Uh, when I gave you the numbers, uh, those were just R&D focus, engineers, etc. are on top of that. Sure, sure. Thank you. Bharat, I'll just add over there. Uh, traditionally, we were experts on the engineering side. We came up by de-bottlenecking, we came up by getting energy efficiency, we, we actually uh, invented or uh, made our own reactors that were much more efficient in the various chemistries uh, that we operate in. So we had a very strong uh, engineering background and now uh, right now, what we are focusing is on the chemistry background. Since we got into the specialty industry and the fluorochem, it's a lot of chemistry involved, and our background of engineering uh, really gives us a very added advantage of having both uh, capabilities. Yeah, thank you, Ravisa. Uh, that was what I was looking for. <laughs> no, absolutely, Bharat Bhai. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anurag Patel from Roha Asset Managers. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Sir, for this uh, SI capex, how much uh, would be the total plan capex? So, 
लक्ष्मी and then we will start the process of amalgamation in the due course okay so that's it for my side thank you thank you the next question is on the line of alisha mahavla from envision capital please go ahead hi sir good afternoon and thank you for taking my question first please give greetings to you and your team um so my first question was in with respect to your ai business um If you see sequentially from Q1 to Q2, there is a um, very nominal growth uh, in this segment. Is this because of capacity constraints? And this is sort of the run rate that we will be looking at. So we are operating at more than 80% of the capacity in this phase. Okay, and it is quite possible in this vertical. to continue to de bottleneck making facilities and continue to get incremental uh, capacities out of that currently that is the uh, uh, way or the path that we are following okay so basically this is the sort of runway we can expect till there is a further de bottlenecking that takes place yes plus of course in addition to that we have the capacities of yellowstone where there is further headroom to increase capacities so we will go ahead with that but we are not quantifying that right now okay so maybe for next quarter we can see some jump because of that capacity i will not comment on that okay. please that's fine that's fine okay and uh, the next question was with respect to the si business and while we do understand that it was impacted because of the flood um is it possible to quantify what is the kind of orders that either got deferred or cancelled would we be at a runway that was better than what we did in q1 uh hush can you take up this thing we would not like to quantify that but i think principally speaking the run rate if you see q4 of last year q1 and q3 they're looking at a consistent trajectory for si uh as mentioned in our slide deck as well there are specific strategies that we've been adopting and working on for the last 3 years which we have seen to play out so definitely you, you will see a trajectory what was there prior to the flood okay got it and this one last uh, clarification which is mentioned earlier in the call that uh, a correct uh, contribution in margin run rate to see would be the q2 of last year so are we saying that a 11 12% kind of ebitda margin is the most sustainable number plus minus obviously gain for volatility just wanted to clarify that no we are not saying that we have uh, stated whatever we have stated at that point in time is to give a sense of how the distribution of the revenue and the distribution of the profitability or ebit or ebitda is going to be so that is the right distribution and if you compare that with the q1 of the current year you will realize that the spike is there in the assetize space while all the good work which has been done in the si business had gotten overshadowed by this spike yeah okay got it okay sir thank you thank you 
The next question is from the line of Mohit Jain, a retail investor. Please go ahead. Mohit Jain, oh, the line is in the top mode. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, can you please uh, provide this transcript of this call after the call ends? Hello? Yeah, the transcript takes at least, uh, you know, five working days to be put up, so we can't immediately provide it after the call. Ah, not immediately, but uh, uh -huh. Once this call, uh, after five, six days, a uh, reasonable yeah, time. Yeah, that will be available after five days. Maybe. Okay, fine. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Devakar Nahata, an investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, everyone. Yeah, thanks for uh, getting my question here. So my question is uh, for Harsh. So I remember in the previous quarterly results, uh, we had mentioned that, you know, uh, the floods had already happened and we expected muted results to come in the uh, next quarter. So this was something, I think, around August, September. So uh, the question is that, I mean, uh, where we end, when we say muted results, were we anticipating the bottom lines to get like hit or uh, were we expecting at that time uh, similar bottom lines? So uh, apologies if you misunderstood me. Uh, the communication that we tried to make at several occasions, including our AGM, has been the plant is shut and will restart in due course of time. I think a plant being shut would communicate clearly the impact it would have since you wouldn't have production, but I will try to improve my communication and be clear. All right. Yeah, I think uh, that could have made more sense. And uh, also like when we say, like, you know, we have uh, insurance for even the loss of profit. So like, has we, I mean, is it something which is yet to be considered in the, uh, in the overall scheme of things, or is it something which we'll get as an insurance in the next quarterly results? So, it, it, to answer your first question, it is not considered in the current results. It is not even calculated. It is under uh, review. Okay, number one. Number two, this will be accounted for as and when we receive the claim from the insurance company. For it. Correct. So basically, uh, the numbers which we see is uh, basically because of the disruption which happened due to the flood and insurance hasn't really helped in the numbers as of now. No, 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 not at all. Correct. Yeah, that, that helps. And also, uh, I mean, we had uh, mentioned about the uh, new SI plant, uh, which is going to start in November in Mahad. So because of this flood, that, uh, I mean, what would be the start date for that plant now, uh, which was planned for November? So, so March and April, that is the timeline for it right now. It shifted exactly by a quarter, primary, only because of the flood impact and remobilization of uh, all the manpower, et cetera. Got it. And uh, is like government also helping to some extent because there are a lot of industries in Mahad and a lot of them have got impacted. So, uh, I mean, do they also have some kind of plans? Oh, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Nahata. May we request that you return to the question queue so the participants waiting for the turn? Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the follow-up. Uh, just uh, to reconcile the uh, CAPEX numbers, so this year we'll be having 250 crores of SI CAPEX. Uh, I think we had spent about 100 crores on fluoro speciality till uh, March and uh, another 50 crores so during the first half. And total CAPEX is about, uh, as indicated, 280 crores. So effectively, uh, 180 crores of uh, fluoro speciality CAPEX and uh, 250 crores of uh, SI CAPEX. Uh, that entire amount will be uh, spent during FY22. Uh, is it a right assumption? Uh, it may 
spillover in terms of cash flows if you are trying to assess into the first quarter of the next fiscal. However, the commitment is of the order that you have just now spoken about. Right. And after this, we don't have any concrete plans uh, as of now from uh, CAPEX perspective. Not, I think, let Harsh respond to that. Harsh, please, can you please? Uh, so let me not say there are no, there are no concrete plans. There are plans uh, constantly and we'll inform the market uh, at the appropriate time once we've consented all our advisors and board. Uh, right, right. Um, uh, apologies, I just uh, reframed uh, the question. It was uh, more or less uh, not approved plans as of now. So, uh, consequently, the new plans will certainly come up. Uh, the, just a second question on uh, SI CAPEX. So, once uh, the SI CAPEX is done, uh, normally uh, the facility uh, will be uh, completely utilized over a period of, say, two to three years. Uh, what is our sense on that? Given that it's a brownfield uh, expansion, we do expect a steeper ramp up. Also, the flood has caused delay uh, in our startup plans, and we are seeing a lot of demand traction and demand pull. So we are hoping to truncate that period. All right. Um, that's it from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ravi Mehta from... Deep Financial, please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question is pertaining to the AI segment, uh, where uh, I think uh, there was a comment that the spreads have normalized in this quarter uh, compared to the previous quarter. Uh, but when I see the top line of the segment, it is pretty much uh, flat. So uh, the realization seems to be stable. So what is driving the spreads? Or if you can just uh, elaborate a little bit on this. So I'll take that question, Harsh. So um, uh, Mr. Mehta, uh, the, the prices have corrected, not that they have not. Uh, there is also an implication or, you know, uh, of the volumes. When you see the top line in financial terms, but the <clears throat> while the selling prices have corrected, the, the raw material prices have not corrected to that extent, therefore the compression. So if you, if you look at the RMC to revenue percentage, you will be able to uh, make that out. The other factor here is the uh, increase in the energy costs between these two quarters yeah okay, okay. Uh, also one uh, follow-up on the si segment uh, so when you started the plant uh, in the september in a phased way uh, one after the other blocks and when you ramp it up gradually uh, does it uh, lead to lower yields and hence a lower gross margin uh, harsh can you just take this please mm, could you just uh repeat the question so i understand it fully again yeah uh, so uh, as the si plant was shut and we started in september mm -hmm. and we gradually were scaling up uh, i think different blocks uh, uh, gradually yeah. so uh, wanted to understand when such a gradual ramp up happens uh, are yeah. the yields lower uh, as you ramp it up and then it stabilizes at a higher throughput uh, is that one of the reason also for a gross margin compression in this quarter so I don't think the uh, principally yes when you ramp up any plant until it's optimum utilization you're not operating as efficiently. So yes, there is a loss, but I do not think that is the most significant amount of loss. The primary loss has come from the fact that we could not produce uh, because of two thirds of the volumes being wiped out. Sixty percent lower in volumes, uh, you know, speaks for itself. Sure. Okay, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bharat Shah from ASK Investment Managers Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, 
when we, uh, if we take a little longer term view of the business uh, from the vantage point of where we are today, uh, where we are raising capacity both in SI, we are uh, uh, preparing ourselves uh, for a greater opportunity in FI business. And in AI, uh, we uh, continue to have favorable tailwinds from the user industry, uh, plus uh, raising of the capacity, uh, increasing the speciality component of the business, uh, increasing research and development strength, more from a chemistry development stage, uh, uh, therefore more fundamental uh, improvement in capability. Uh, so when we put all of this into picture, uh, maybe from wherever uh, we will be in the current year in uh, FY22, 27, 2800, 3000 crore or whatever turnover will be. If we have to draw a picture in terms of three to uh, three years from now, what do you think uh, Lakshmi Organic would look like in terms of uh, size, scale, and the kind and uh, strength in terms of the profitability? Uh, thank you, Bharat Bhai. A very, very, very deep question. And I think uh, our company uh, is driven by passion. And we have always built platforms and built businesses on those platforms. So when we acquired the uh, Dikitin platform, we leapfrogged to many more products. And today we are putting in our initial capex may have been uh, less than 150 crores. Today we are putting in 250 or 220 crores in just two products of this particular branch of chemistry on this platform. So we believe uh, that there will be a gestation period on the fluorine side. It's a new platform. It's a wonderful platform. And we have been receiving a lot of interest and all over the world actually that, uh, you know, are you all really doing this? What is and how can we grow it? So we believe that this platform will give us an opportunity to invest and to grow on many more such verticals on this platform. Also, we continue to grow on the speciality and we will continue to expand our businesses. So I cannot put a number, but my aspirations are that our company should be one of the most respected companies driven by competent people and uh, being able to achieve a part of the specialty chemical space as a respected company, Bharatar. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Bhankar sir, and uh, happy Diwali to all of you. Thank you. Happy Diwali, Bharat Bhai. Thank you. The next question, we'll be taking the last question. That is on the line of Tanush Mehta, an individual investor. Please go ahead. So firstly, I had a couple of questions. Uh, the first question pertains to the cyclicality of our business. Uh, if, uh, when it, in the results of a few chemical companies, we've seen margins being compressed. And this was the same in our case. So how would you define the cyclic, cyclicality impact to our business? Because... Uh, the impact has been quite uh, adverse in our case as compared to other specialty chemical companies. That is the first one. Uh, the second one pertains to, sir, uh, uh, overall the chemistry in which we are present, we have grown them quite exponentially in the last few years. And uh, so I just wanted to know in that case uh, of... How many years have we taken, suppose, if we entered into the decading chemistry? Uh, how many years did we take that to scale it up to this position or the level at which we are standing today? Thank you, sir. Harsh, you may please go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, again, let, let me talk about the cyclicality first. Um, 
yes, uh, several businesses, including our assetized business, uh, is cyclical. And uh, we do see cycles in that at different highs and different lows. However, what we like to track is, does it consistently grow, grow over time? And is there continuous demand traction in that business? Uh, the last quarter, we had an exceptional performance, which we have not seen before, which, was, which, said, which we have clearly stated. The current quarter performance is what we call normalized margins in this business. And the, that's the first part on the cyclicality. Uh, we don't try to control this. Uh, I don't think that is in the nature. Market forces are bigger than anyone. It is just a question of how do you manage it? And can you avoid at, at any point in time uh, consistently grow and maintain profitability is what the objective is. So that's on the asset tiles. Um, on the speciality front, so 2010 to 20, so not 2010, 2011 around then is when we really started production in our speciality business. Uh, like in FI and what we are planning, we actually had a much steeper challenge at that time. We were moving from large volume products to fairly specialized products. So the first few years, we took to understand chemistry and settle down in what we had. And thereafter, you saw exponential ramp up. R&D comes in usually a lot earlier, and we've done the same with, uh, we've done the same on the FI side where R&D has already started. And we would expect, uh, we're excited, don't expect. We're excited by having to do something similar again on the FI side. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir, and uh, good luck for the coming quarters. And a happy Diwali. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be here with all our stakeholders, retail investors, finance companies, funds, etc. And it will be our endeavor to uh, satisfy your questions in a manner and in a very transparent and honest manner as we feel. Uh, I hope that we would have satisfied you on most of your questions. If you have anything other than that, please feel free to send us your questions by mail, and we will definitely answer to your questions within the statutory uh, uh, within the statutory limitations. We look forward to again interacting with you in the next quarter, and uh, with a more positive, uh, hopefully, discussion. And uh, we take this opportunity to wish all of you and your families a very happy and uh, Dipavali and a very prosperous New Year. Good luck to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Lakshmi Organic Industries Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.